Major support for these broadcasts is provided by the CUNY TV Foundation, New York Community Bank, Kilroy Architectural Windows, New York's Window Company, Capital One Bank, Perfect Building Maintenance, Chase Commercial Term Lending, Genova Burns, G. and Tomasi and Webster, M&T Bank, The Wickoff Group, Chelsea Lighting, Greenberg Traurig, LLP. Additional support is provided by Ackman Ziff Real Estate, AKA Hotels, Corman Communities, Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, Bank Leumi, USA, Briarwood Organization, CBRE, Colliers International, NYC, Cushman and Wakefield, DDG, Douglaston Development, Levine Builders, Dime Savings Bank of Williamsburg, Eastern Union Funding, Flushing Bank, Friedman LLP, Herrick Feinstein LLP, Hersha Hospitality Trust, Investors Bank, New Banks, James D. Kuhn Real Estate Center at Syracuse University, James Orfanides Centurion Holdings, John Katsimatidis Red Apple Group, Margolin Weiner and Evans, Madison Realty Capital, Meridian Capital Group, Newmark Grub Knight Frank, Popular Community Bank, SJP Properties, Sterling and Sterling, Stonehenge Partners, Urban American, and these friends. So what does a kid from Tel Aviv know about the Plaza Hotel? What does he know about California? Works for Teledyne. I mean, who knows? But I have the legendary friend of mine, Mickey Naftali, who is the chairman and CEO of Naftali Group, and a very interesting life story. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. So tell me a little bit about your parents first, how, how they end up in Israel. Well, my, my dad actually immigrated to Israel from uh, Romania when he was, I think, 17 or 18 years old. He was the first uh, moving to, to Israel. And a few years after that, he, he moved his parents and his uh, brothers to Israel. My mom was born in Israel. She was a Sabra. Yeah. And they met, uh, they met in Israel. They met in, met in the army and they got married. <laughs> so tell me about uh, your uh, growing up in Israel. It was great. It was just great. Uh, we we had uh, I had a really uh, great uh, childhood. Everything was like free. I spent, you know, most of the time outside, studying a little bit, but most of the time outside on the beach. Now you told me your dad was a, a colonel in the uh, yes. military. Yes. Yes. So yeah, no, when when he moved to Israel, he actually went directly to the army and he he started a career over there. So he spent uh, twenty plus years in the army. Um, and then he moved on. And then he got involved with a transportation company, correct? Correct. He, he was the CEO of the biggest transportation company in Israel. And he, um, he did well, and, uh, and then he got, uh, got sick and uh, unfortunately he died in an early age. So what happens now? Your sister moved to California, right? And this young Mickey Naftali does what? Which, your real name is Michael, I noticed, right? And Correct. And you changed it to Mickey. It's well, I, I changed it, yeah. So sh should I change my name from Michael <laughs> to Moish or something like that? Well, my, my real name is Michael, still Michael, okay. but, but I call myself Mickey. So, okay. so how, how did you end up in California? Actually, I, I went to, uh, I wasn't the best uh, student in, in high school, to say the least. And, uh, but in any event, then I went to, uh, after the high school, I went to the army. And, and you spent a couple more than a number of years. Correct. Usually you were you were involved with the Lebanon uh, conflict. Yeah, I went. So I went to a, to the officer school, and actually that's the point that I really kind of changed, and I think I, I matured, and so I was very successful in the officer school. It was the first time that I was really successful, and it felt you know I felt really good. So I uh, I spent fi almost five years in the army, about a year in Lebanon at the time. And right after the army, I, I started to, I went to uh, Hebrew to University, right? No. Well, actually in Tel Aviv, Tel, Tel Aviv University. Tel Aviv. But because I wasn't a great, uh, great student in high school, I went to a two-year program that uh, is called actually practical engineering. I did extremely well. 
and, uh, and then I decided to complete and to have an engineering degree, so I moved to California. Um, my, um, my sister uh, lived at the time in LA. I moved to LA, I, um, I was accepted to USC, which was great for me, and I completed my degree over there. But while you were at USC, uh, you got involved with uh, some jobs, some odd jobs, and then in real estate. So tell me about that. Well, it, it was actually a quite uh, interesting story. So I had a motorcycle just driving back and forth to, uh, uh, to college, and one day uh, a, a cop uh, stopped me on uh, speeding. Uh, um, so I didn't have money to pay, to pay the ticket. So I, it was only a few months after I moved to California. So I, I looked for, for a job and I found someone introduced me to, uh, to a very nice guy that, um, that um, was just managing a, an apartment building. So we had a nice uh, dinner and he was, I guess he was impressed with, with me. And oh, they, you, were, you, were, you were a military man. Eh? Right. So he said, you know what, you know, here's the checkbook and please start to, to manage this building. So I started to manage the building. Eventually, I managed three buildings uh, uh, for not exactly for him, for, for a partnership. And uh, those were, were rough buildings in downtown L.A. Uh, but it was, uh, it, was, uh, it was the first time that I kind of uh, dealt with, you know, had some exposure to real estate. But it was a really interesting story, <laughs> right, about the money, the, the building right. you found. Tell me about the story. So here's the, the thing. So one day he came and he said, uh, Mickey, you know, my partners are looking for to buy a new apartment building. So, you know, just go out there, try to find, try to find a building. And uh, I said, but I, I, I don't know how to. He said, don't worry, you just go out there and then, and I'm sure that you will, you will be able to find. So, you know, I, I spent a lot of time searching here and there. I didn't know a lot. I didn't know how to underwrite the deal. Uh, I found actually a very interesting, what I thought a very interesting apartment building in Pomona, uh, California. And uh, so I showed Orange him. Orange County? Well, uh, no. I, I, <laughs> you know what? I'm not sure which I, county. I think it was Orange <laughs> County. Okay. <laughs> okay, maybe. And um, so I showed him the deal. And he said, great, let's go tomorrow to present it to the partners. I said, I thought that you're presenting it to the partner. He said, no, 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 you are going to present it to the partner. Okay. So we went the next day. We, I presented the deal. And eventually, they ended up uh, buying it. So he said, um, after they bought, after they closed, I wasn't involved in that. He said, let's go to celebrate. Right. And uh, <laughs> something with the wine bottles and uh, right. a couple so, of things. So he was a very interesting uh, gentleman. And he was also a... Uh, writing in one of the, the LA magazines, he was writing on, you know, uh, op you know, on, on wines. So we ended up in this private club, and he came with a duffel bag. He opened the duffel bag, put it on the table, opened the duffel bag, and sure enough, there were like ten bottles of wines. And he, he started to to rave about each wine, and you know, I, I didn't know how to drink. So you know, we had the we had the lovely dinner and. Uh, we had a lot of uh, wine, and uh, and all of a sudden he said, "Well, I just I actually forgot. Here is your check." I said, "Okay." I opened the envelope, and it was a really nice check. It was a substantial <laughs> check, and, and you had no idea because I had no idea. You didn't. Know. I didn't sign anything with him. Uh, you know, he just said, "Go get the deal," and we'll talk after that. And this, so, he was so this very, was the, he was a man. Yeah, so this was the bug, you know, right. this was the bug, the, the initiative. But then you graduate USC and you go to, you work, go to work for Teledyne, sure. right? As an engineer. Right. I started to work as an engineer. At the same time, I continued to manage the, the apartment uh, buildings just, you know, to have, uh, to, to make a little bit more money. And then I worked and, as and an And you meet a, you meet a woman from California <laughs> also, right? Correct. So I, correct. And I met, uh, I met Frida and, uh, and then, um, actually, everything was great. I had a speedboat. I enjoyed the life in California. Great weather. California dreamer. <laughs> yeah, right. Great weather and so on and so forth. And, uh, and then the, the first Gulf War uh, started. Uh, and, and I found myself just spending time watching uh, CNN. CNN and, and, and I didn't feel good. I, I felt that, uh, that I, need go, I need to go back to Israel. So 
I sold everything that I had. I quit my job and um, and I moved. I moved to to Israel and uh, and I actually started to work in in real estate as a as a junior project manager. I just started to work and uh, how did you meet uh, Teshuva? So I had I had actually uh, through my dad that obviously died the many years prior to that, but you know I I I, I made some phone calls and and I met few people that uh, that knew me knew the family, and one of them was uh, was Isaac Teshuva and uh, I met with him and at the time he he was just kind of beginning to. Uh, uh, to gear up and yeah, he was a small operator at that time. He really right. didn't do much, and right. you know, and here was young Mickey. Uh, <laughs> who, he says, uh, "You'll learn the real estate business." Well, but but at the time, actually, Russia opened the gates to, and many right, Jews so immigrant either to Israel or to to the U.S. So there was a huge need, just all of a sudden, for housing in Israel. So he was in a very short time. He had this all those projects to to do. And it was it was just a good match, right? And you did a number of uh, residential projects, some Correct. hotels, some large projects. Very and, uh, active, yeah. Okay. And then it's what 1999, almost 2000, oh, 2000. Almost 2000. Yes. And prior to that, uh, Isaac had bought some unsold apartments in New York City. Correct. Correct. And co-op shares, actually. Co-op shares, yeah. and. Um, for some reason, how how did you decide to come back to New York? Well, he actually we we spoke and he and he uh, he offered uh, me to move to New York again. My wife uh, was her family is uh, is still in L.A. in California, and uh, so we thought, okay, let's let's move to New York and you know. But, just but you were in the presumption <laughs> that you were going to be building these buildings, and oh. Isaac really had nothing here. Oh, forget! It. I I thought that I'm going to to build the biggest building in New York. So I moved in, and there wasn't much. There was just a very small office in Fort Lee, New Jersey, and and just you know, just few apartments. Uh, so what were you doing with these apartments? Uh, just really managing? I, I, frankly, I didn't even pay attention to that. I th I said to myself, I have two choices: either I'm, I either I move back immediately to Israel, and I, because I was at the time I was quite successful in Israel, and I did for Israel relatively mega project. So. I said either I move back or I really try to do something here. So, so talk to me about the first deal that you did because you started a lot in New York. Okay. Right. So what was the first deal? Because so the, you, the first is actually we, we bought uh, the old Barney's parking lot, 151 West 17th Street and 224 West 18th Street. And I put together the design team. We designed uh, two separate, uh, obviously, project uh, about half a block away. And we we designed a condominium uh, project, two two condominium buildings. Right, and this was uh, you know before Chelsea really uh, correct uh, was building over. Well, there. think about it. We were aiming to get about seven hundred bucks a foot at the time, and we're not talking about twenty years ago. So right. So so Chelsea was there. That was the first deal, and, and but after that, then you you found a, one of the deals that uh, you and I discussed. You know, Twenty One Astor Place. Correct. Which was a. Uh, a union project. There was a deal that had gone good and bad. There was Kinkos at one time. There right. was uh, the Starbucks. The Starbucks was the good part of the right. situation. And you had these unusually low ceilings and something like that. But it was the village, right? So it was well, the location. I mean, the 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 building is beautiful, and to me, one of the the the, the nicest building in the city. And the location, uh, the location is great. So. Uh, the upstairs was very difficult to deal with because the, the building has a, a very unique shape. And as you know, when you, especially in a residential development, you try to develop three, four, five different types of units, at least at the, at the majority of the units, and instead of just to customize every, every layout because it's very difficult and very costly. So I had to, in order to solve the problem, I had to create with the design team and the marketing team, we created 51 units, 51 different, different layouts. So it was very challenging, uh, but it was very successful for us. I sold the retail condominium. I created a separate condominium unit for the retail. Uh, Starbucks was at the time already the best performing in the country. So I sold the retail as a separate condominium unit. And uh, and uh, the upstairs was was great. And then you did a number of very interesting deals. You did the the O'Neill, 
right. uh, on 6th Avenue. Right. Uh, and then you bought the property on 8th Avenue, uh, which you, you built another thing. And then one of the, one I'd say one of the true visionary deals that you, transactions was when you bought the gift building where right. everybody was surprised that Norman Sterner had bought the building and then he flipped it to you and said, what, what's Mickey going to do with the gift building? Right. You called that the Grand Mansion, right? The, the Grand Madison. Grand Madison. Correct. Right on Madison Square Park. Exactly. So, look, I mean, it was, it, it was and it's still a very, very nice building. And the location, Madison Park, obviously, I mean, today is, is one of the nicest parks. Uh, it's really, really lovely park. And... And the surrounding is great, but I was actually, and we were the first one to to take the move and, and develop a high-end condominium project. Uh, Out of an uh, office building. Exactly. Yeah. So, look, I, I looked at the building. The building ha is just an amazing building, great ceiling height, but it was the, the gift building of, of New York. So I had 160 tenants. Norman Sterner looked at it as, as an income-producing property, and he, for him, it was a great deal. I paid him $10 million just to flip the contract to me, and I took a chance because I had to deal with 160 tenants. But, in a, you know, it took us a year. We walked around the clock. We, we negotiated with each one of the tenants, and, you know, we, we paid money to, to tenants to leave, and, 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 you know, we ended up with, a, with a, you know, a vacant building and we converted it because I still think it's a great building. Now what's a really interesting story is that I think it was like 2003, 2004, everybody wanted the Mayflower site. Okay. Right. This was the site on fifth, which subsequently became 15 CPS, right. 15 CPW, w. you know, the, the everything over there. And you had been spending time and you oh. really wanted it and subsequently you lost it. Right. So, so you're, you're over there and, and you're, you're on Central Park, and what happens? You, you walk past the Plaza Hotel? Right. But before that, I really spent over a year in negotiating so-called, I thought that I'm one of only maybe two or three. Yeah, one of 200. Negotiating right. on, right. The, on the Mayflower Hotel, and I really spent a lot of time, many, many meetings, and, and I thought that, uh, that I'm going to, to win the bid, but obviously I lost the bid, so... But well, you lost it to an Israeli. <laughs> A partnership, a partnership, yeah. right? So, so you know, I, I, I just, I started. I, I was looking for a property on the park, and I walked on on Central Park West and Central Park South, and ended up at the steps of the plaza, and I, I was just looking, and I said, "What about the plaza?" I called my zoning lawyer. And I said, uh, Jay, Jay Siegel, and I said, Jay, uh, can you do me a favor? Look at the zoning. So he said, Nikki, the plaza is zoned residential, and it's actually grandfather as a hotel, but 80% of the space is zoned residential. Then I started to, to look who owns the plaza, and, and I got the, you know, to, to know that uh, Prince Al-Walid Ben Talal uh, owns 50%, and a gentleman from Singapore, Mr. Quackland Bank, on the other 50% they had the joint venture. So I said to myself, okay, I need to try to go after, to, to try to initiate something. I called um, my friend's brokers at the time, they were at Cushman Wakefield, and I said, guys, I want to go after the deal. Let's try to, to, to do something here. And we spent you know, a couple of weeks uh, to really, really try to find an angle how we can put ourselves in front of, of actually Quackling Bank, the Singaporean uh, billionaire. Eventually, after I would say probably six to eight weeks, I got, uh, I got a small, small opening and someone was willing to meet with me at the plaza. So I went to this meeting uh, and this gentleman that introduced himself as the right-hand man of uh, Mr. Quack uh, opened the door in one of the suites over there. And, and for about half an hour, he was very, very kind of a, a cold and distance. And he just asked me who you are and, you know, just to try to find information. Eventually, he said, well, just a question. If you would convert this space that we sit right now to to a residential, what do you think you can get? So 
I was just very quickly thinking to myself, if I say too low or I say too high, you know, this. so I said, you know what, I think I can get $2,000 food. I said, oh, okay, no, 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 that that's, doesn't make any sense, and, you know, let's move on. And you know what, it was nice to meet you, but, uh, but we're not selling the plaza. So I said, can I, can I just look at the view? He said, yeah, sure, let's go to the window. And so we, we, we were standing at the wind, you know, just overlooking the park, and I said, wow, this is just amazing, amazing view. Can I take 24 hours and just rethink and kind of try to, to come up with the right price? Uh, he said, sure, take the 24 hours. We're not selling the plaza, but call me, call me back tomorrow. So sure enough, I called him the next day. And I said, I thought about it. I think I can get 2,500 a foot. So I said, well, this is probably makes sense, but we're not selling the plaza. It was nice to, to meet with you. And that's it. Silence. I didn't hear anything. And I was so, you know, I kept calling the, the brokers and I'm pushing them. Let's try to find a way. Just put me in front of, uh, of the head guy, of uh, Mr. Quack, and so on and so forth. Eventually, after a few weeks, we got, uh, they found a, a lawyer in Singapore that, that presented himself as the private lawyer to, to Mr. Quack. So I, I sent an offer of $625 million to, to purchase the plaza. And I got, uh, we got an email, the, the brokers got an email back that I'm invited to, to meet with him three days after that in Singapore for half an hour meeting. So quickly, uh, we put together a flight. This is a very long flight. It's the, the longest uh, direct flight in the world. It's almost 18 and a half, 19 hours flight, direct flight. We flew to Singapore, landed in the airport, uh, you know, just put the suit uh, tie just to, to look nice and went to the meeting. The half an hour meeting became a 10 hour meeting, a very, very long negotiation, back and forth, back and forth. But at the beginning he said, you look like a nice guy, but you, you just, you're wasting your time because you offered me $625 million and I have offers for $750 million. So I'm thinking to myself, okay, so why, why exactly you spend the time with me? So we started to negotiate. I went up to $675 million and he was at $700 million. He went down to $700 million and we were stuck. We went to a lunch and, you know, I was very trying really to convince him. I knew that if I'm leaving the, the Singapore the without, it's, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to have the deal. Eventually, to make a long story short, we agree on $675 million. But, but, but then you had to go, you had the prince. <laughs> so I said, what about the prince? He said, I call the prince and I have his blessing. And uh, we can, we can uh, go ahead and, and work on a contract. I said, that's great, but with all due respect, let's let, it was already 8.30 in the, in the evening. I said, with all due respect, everyone left over there. I would like to have a one-pager to give me a 30 so, days So you typed it, right? What? You had somebody type it over <laughs> there, right? Yeah, so there was one guy over there. Both of us were standing behind him and just kind of arguing about what, what to write over there. Eventually, I left Singapore with, with this one pager that actually helped me a lot. Now, because wh how why do you... Okay, when the Barbizon Hotel was converted, they converted the entire hotel. Right. Why do you decide to keep a hotel component and a residential component? Well, the, the first, actually, my first concept was, which I, I still believe in, in this model very, very much, is if you really want to create top, top high-end residential units, it's, it's always great if you can have a five, six-star hotel next to it. So the residents, if they want, they can, they can call, pick up the phone and, and call and get the best right, service. Right, which in, in a way is similar to what happened to the Mandarin Oriental at, Correct. Uh, at the Correct. Columbus Circle, Correct. Uh, which is today trying to be replicated, you know, uh, with the uh, <clears throat> the Cristal, you know, uh, Correct. Uh, and some other properties. Correct, Correct. Baccarat. Baccarat uh, Hotel. Correct, but but when you, you know, at the Far East, actually, it's a, it's a very, you see a lot of those mixed-use developments that years after that I was involved again in Singapore in a mixed-use development, but mixed-use development, and it makes a lot of sense. So the original model was, hey, this is the plaza, 
this is an amazing brand that was frankly for for 20 years prior to 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 us purchasing it it wasn't the best right it was but but great history a landmark building so why not to revive the landmark you know bring back the five six star quality and sell the residential right. units. and what, what you did was you put a a hotel component you put a uh, a long-term condo rental or condo hotel component right. and the luxury condos and everything sold and it's been one of the most successful deals it was great so you know all of this and then there were more developments around the country over right. there and then what happens uh, in 2010 or 2011 mickey decides to leave a lot and create the naftali group well i i actually made made a decision uh, at least three years prior to that but we as we all know we we are in the in the midst of the financial crisis and being a major part of building a, from a small company to a, to a major group i couldn't personally i couldn't just leave leave right. it wasn't the right thing for me to do so i i walked through the financial crisis to a point that we we felt very comfortable i finished even you know in 2010 i took we we had many many properties in right, canada right 50 worth and you no and also in canada so what, you know i went through a, about a year i spent uh, working on an ipo and i became the chairman of the public company so i spent a lot of time really restructuring everything and bringing the group to to so, a very so let's talk with two minutes left a little bit about what you're doing today and then a little bit about the family so so we 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 you know i left in in june 30 of uh, 2011 july 1st i opened naftali group with my top team that the same team that spent the time with me and worked you know all those deals uh, at a lot and we started to invest and we are very very active we uh we already closed the 12 deals and we are working right now. And, and now you learn Brooklyn because before <laughs> you never knew what Brooklyn was, right? I mean, Correct. Now, now you realize Correct. that Brooklyn is, as Marty Mark would say, <laughs> the best borough. We, we, did, we did six deals in Brooklyn, but we moved quickly to, to Manhattan and we are very active in the Upper West Side and, you know, in Chelsea now, in the, the financial district. Uh, we do a lot and it's great. It's, it's a great market. We have a really great support from from the commercial banks we have really great relationship with the you know some of the best uh, equity funds so it's so it's a great uh, venture tell me about the family you have two daughters right i have two daughters the family is great my older daughter is in uh, at is syracuse syracuse yeah and uh, it's great and your younger daughter my younger daughter is in high school and in a year she will live to uh so to you, do you think you'll uh, do you think you'll expand the naftali group out of the new york area um, it, it's always a possibility because, you know, as a team, we have a lot of experience. We, we, we invested in over nine states in the U.S. and also in Canada. But frankly, right now, there are, we still find it's difficult, but we still find great opportunities in New York. And I think that there is no better, better market than New York. So I'd like to say that, you know, it's nice to have the kid from Tel Aviv, you know, the, 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 the former... Uh, a uh, man who spent time in Lebanon and uh, the, the, the crisis, and you've done a great job in the conversion of the plaza, uh, many buildings, and thanks for being here today. Thank you. Thank you for having me.